Welcome to vlog one one, or no, it's actually one twenty one. Um, we're out of the teens now. Today, I want to make a short video about my sort of difficulties in approaching my um, <laughs> my style of writing, and this is going to. This discussion is going to be based around the um, the writing type philosophy that uh, or categorizations that Ellen ugh, YouTuber Ellen Brock came up with. She's actually a professional editor, and um, it's kind of funny what happened was that before she. Before she uh, took a year off of YouTube, um, she made a video called, you know, the four writing types. And in that video, she promised that she'd make a video on each of the four. So, you know, the introduction and the four types. So she made that introduction and then didn't upload for, I think, over a year. So, um, you know, that was kind of interesting, but she's back now. And she's making the individual videos. Let's talk about the four, um, not writer types so much as the four different approaches one writer might have to writing. Um, and so I have a diagram here that I'm going to show you in a moment, but just to get your brain ready for it so it's not too confusing, um, let me sort of go over a couple of the dichotomies. So, anyone who's read even a little bit of um, advice on writing knows that often uh, we're split into two types. That is the, the pantser and the plotter. Um, and plotter makes sense, right? It's somebody who likes to plot their, their narrative. Um, you know, they make an outline maybe very detailed, maybe they plan out all their characters and what they're like, and then they, then they write. Then there's the other person, the pantser, who, uh, that comes from the term, the saying, fly by the seat of their pants. They kind of just write and, um, just go from their head. They don't, they don't take, they don't sit down and, um, they don't need to write it all out. Um, so she also adds another dichotomy, another spectrum, which would be methodological versus intuitive. And so that's sort of um, kind of your approach to structuring things. So a methodological person might um, say if they're writing a play, use the five act structure. That's very common in plays and movies. Um, or they might, you know, study the hero's journey. Whereas the intuitive um, is going to find these structures. Um, they're going to find them constricting because it'll get in the way. So let's, there's the diagram I drew out. So basically, um, because these are huge different approaches, uh, the sorts of advice that would be actually useful, because right, just like in all things in life, writing advice is not one size fits all. Just like, um, <clears throat> just like with anything else, um, some writing advice is actually not only not helpful, but can work against certain um, writing styles. So when I saw this, I was like, yes, actually, because I found that um, as a general, most writing advice as a general rule is not that helpful. And I always thought, you know, I always thought it was because everybody's perspective on writing is different and um you know you kind of have to pick and choose which ones you think are going to work for you 
But the benefit to this sort of approach is that um, basically once you find out which of the types you are, then there might be certain things that you kind of maybe in the back of, my, of your mind knew you had to do, uh, like plan things out, but you didn't want to do because it just feels easier. And she actually said like, um, there's a sort of romanticism associated with the the uh, the person who falls in this quadrant here, the intuitive pantser, because it's somebody who can just kind of sit down and write. Um, I think Stephen King is this sort of writer where he just sits down and goes, and he relies essentially on a, the sort of internal... Um, knowledge of um you know story structure that he got through just reading non-stop when he was younger he, you know he's, if you watch any biography or anything or read about him he was a voracious reader he probably still is so i came with the question okay you know which one am i am i uh, and I, I came to the conclusion, I'm definitely not a methodolog methodological pro plotter. I'm not somebody who kind of um, plans every single detail out. I like, I, I, I have a sort of philosophy when it comes to writing. It's a personal philosophy. I don't think that most writers do it, but I think that this approach does have a sort of... Um, benefit to it and the philosophy is that cat breathes loud when he's sleeping the philosophy well there's certain parts to it but essentially um it stems from my time in late high school as a uh, dungeon master in dungeons and dragons which is that um you find out that there are certain almost un, unwritten and unspoken, but um, incredibly important rules in um, running a game for other players, which is that you kind of have to get out of their way and let them engage with the world on their own terms. And so rather than, say, forcing them to go into the, a dungeon, you have to encourage them to go in the dungeon. Or maybe if you want them to go in that direction, you need to maybe, you know, set a bear on them and that'll chase them there or, or, or give them a lot of reward. Like, oh, there's, you know, apparently there's a legend that there's a big treasure chest of gold in that dungeon or a big special sword. That's problematic because usually it's a few players and not all of them use swords, but you get the principle. You can't just say, okay, now you guys are walking to the dungeon because now you've taken the control from the player to yourself. And um, the dungeon master is supposed to run the world, not the players. The players run their characters. And so when I moved over to writing, um, especially the more I got into it, the more I sort of held on to this hands-off approach with not players, but characters. So I would sort of develop the world and um, basically uh, give the characters a goal that they wanted for some reason. And then I would just sort of let it play out, not only in my mind, but on the page and my mind as I wrote it. And that's essentially what happened with my first um, novel project, Alice and Finch, which was that, um, once you got to, you know, the post, uh, separation chapters, um, the two characters wanted to get back together, and there were certain things that one of them, especially the male character, had to do to get back, or they thought they had to do to get back together. Um, so 
you know, they had a goal and they had certain things in their way to overcome. And so that novel actually naturally wrote itself. And I could say that for that, I might have been something like an intuitive panther. The problem, well, one of the other pieces I'm really proud of, um, just, well, for some reasons, but what was a, a short story called Rays. And both of these you can find on my website, by the way, uh, danieltriumph.com. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description for that. But in Rays, I did the opposite. Or not the opposite, but I actually plotted. I sort of... I started writing, and then part... Uh, maybe after the first page of... I think it's a five or seven page story after the first page like not very far in um i realized that there are a lot of pieces of information kind of getting juggled here um and a lot of them are not obvious to the reader there were like five things going on there was okay um i need to point out that she's missing her like her teeth are damaged um without being too obvious, or, or maybe hold on to, like, give hints and then eventually give it away. Um, I need to, um, the main character starts talking about her mother, and that's the sort of motivation that underlies her actions, which, uh, again, is not obvious. So there are a lot of things sort of bubbling underneath the surface that I wanted to continually hint at, and, you know, maybe they interact with each other, and so I kind of I was typing it, and so in uh, you can add comments to a Microsoft Word document, and so I put a comment. This point is referencing the mother. This point is referencing the teeth. This point is referencing the main mission. Um, you know, and so it was. Um, it, I wasn't necessarily plotting it, but. It was definitely far from pantsing, so I don't know quite if that falls into plotting or methodological. When Ellen Brock talks about methodological, um, she sort of, I, I said before, it's, it's when you have an external structure like the hero's journey and you sort of write your, not, your work in between those. And I don't think that's what, what I'm doing. So maybe it's more intuitive, but... I did sort of plan there, so maybe I'm more of an intuitive planner. Um, and another sort of issue that I had is, I, for a long time, I never liked the idea of having um, a pre-existing methodology that you use, at least intentionally, because it can come out formulaic. And also, you know, I sort of have this idea that, I kind of want to have at least some elements of reality or realism in my writing. And I don't think that real life follows a five-act structure, structure or a, um, uh, a hero's journey structure or any other structure you might think of. So that's another um, issue I had, which is even if I maybe I am a methodological writer at some level and of course you can be kind of anywhere on this graph but even if I am I don't want to use <laughs> the methodologies because they don't seem to really I just for that philosophical reason which I just um, explained that it doesn't necessarily line up very well with reality or realism and maybe that's why realism is this sort of other approach when you talk about literary realism which you might find in novels like um like tolstoy's novels like anna karenina or war and peace although war and peace has a few kind of funny bits that are a little bit um a little just a little bit more whimsical than you might expect in a realist novel 
uh, Anna Karenina, he's, which he wrote later, he seemed to have mastered it a little more. But, so if there is a methodology that I have, it's not necessarily a structure. It might be more trying to emulate this sort of um, emotional arc rather than a event arc, rather than, you know, in the hero's journey in act one, uh, the hero has to leave their hometown and then go on an adventure, right? Call to adventure. And then he has to, or she has to um, find a mentor. And then, you know, there's like 12 steps to the hero's journey. And I'm not so sure I want to follow that. Um, especially not intentionally, but so that's, that's event-based, you could say, planning. Whereas, um, realist novels, or at least, especially, um, Anna Karenina has more, the, the events are less important than the sort of, the sort of, you know, character's emotional arc, where they'll, they'll be trying to figure out some sort of issue and then the climax isn't that um, they're doing something and then they achieve it it's more they're trying to figure out something and then they have a realization and that's the the sort of mini climax of a of a scene or chapter um, I really like that approach and it's actually not so present in War and Peace and so I might have to <sighs> when I finish War and Peace, go back to Anna Karenina and give it another go. Um, just to keep my writing style, um, keep feeding inspiration into it. But the other thing is, remember I said, I want, like players in Dungeons and Dragons, I want my characters to sort of run the story on some level, like I use my intuition to sort of give them energy and try and leave them as autonomous in my head as possible and kind of see what they do, see where they take the story. Um, and hopefully the result of that is a more um, natural and less um, robotic and, you know, hopefully more real, realist <laughs> um, result for the characters so that is th those are my kind of two loose approaches to writing is the sort of attempt to avoid at least as a first approach or intentional approach the 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 template methodologies um, and, you know, there's some people who find great use in these and, um, you know, if they can work with it without it being um, more of a problem than a solution, then, you know, feel free. Um, I'm just saying that it's almost like a hang up, a personal hang up, not a uh, you have to write my way sort of thing. So... I think I said everything I wanted to say, and because I'm a little tired, uh, a little depressed, um, it didn't necessarily come out in the perhaps the most clear way. So maybe I'll go over it again real quick. Basically, I'm actually personally not sure, maybe because I don't even understand entirely what the some of these words exactly mean, but put the question mark. Am I a methodological pantser or a intuitive plotter. I think I'm more on methodological pantser, but when I was watching, and those are the two videos she has out so far. She hasn't done these two with the arrows that I, um, but so when I started watching the video on, um, intuitive plotting, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't know, maybe this is good, maybe this is not, or maybe this is right for me, maybe it isn't. So I watched a little bit of the Methodological Pantser, the other one on the dichotomy, the other uh, question mark, the one down here.
And again, I had the same feeling. Maybe this isn't really me. And I know for a fact I'm not a um, intuitive pantser, somebody who can just sit down and go. Because um, I can't do it with my current novel. It's it's just too um, too many pieces to keep in my head. So I think... more work is needed more thought is needed and and of course you know watching uh the video for your type isn't necessarily going to um be the ultimate solution to to becoming a good writer and i yeah so you know, to go by exclusion. I don't think I'm a, I don't think I'm a methodological plotter, because I can write. That just with Alice and Finch, I just kind of wrote it. But the plan for Alice and Finch was the 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 motivations built into the character, um, and the the environmental things that they had to overcome. So, I don't think, like, even though I kind of pantsed it, there was a sort of metho methodology built into, um, into the character's motivations, um, and built into the fact that, you know, one of them got exiled and they're trying to work to overcome this so that they can be together again. Um... Methodological pantser, or that's that's intuitive, or yeah, that's methodological pantser. Maybe, or sorry, that's intuitive plot. See, they're kind of confusing. <laughs> Maybe I should watch the introduction video again. But I think the one we we're leaning to is that I do have a sort of methodology, but it's it's self built. Um, the other thing is in my current novel project, The Soul and Prince, I'll take this approach where I, I, you know, I kind of write um, a summary or I have an idea of where to go next, and then I write a few chapters, like five or six chapters, and then once I'm past that problem, that current problem in the story, I get stuck. And that's kind of where I am now. That's that's why I'm making this video instead of just just writing. The last time I got stuck was over the summer, summer of 2021, for people who are watching this far in the future. Um, and so in that summer, I I wrote, I, I had gotten, I, I needed to, to figure out what to do next, and I had some ideas, and I kind of came up with an aha moment. I wrote it on a, uh, a scrap, not, not a scrap, but an, a piece of printer paper at work and um, basically it gave me a few steps forward and it actually explained some things that had happened before and I was like oh brilliant unfortunately that piece of paper um, got got in the wash fortunately I had taken a picture of it beforehand so I have it on my phone. Uh, which phone? Oh my gosh. I should have it somewhere. Um, I think I might have uploaded it to Facebook, so maybe I can dig back a little. But anyway, you know, there was a little bit of maybe plotting, maybe methodology in there somewhere, and then it fueled me going forward. And I seem to have that with this project where I write maybe five to seven chapters and then I'm stuck and then I figure it out and maybe I have to back up a chapter or two for the new plan but then I go so you know um, sometimes figuring out uh, your own approach can be difficult but 
I think I've come to some useful conclusions, which is that, um, you know, too much methodology, too much um, hard structured methodology isn't for me. Um, plotting, I don't plot too far into my works. And the reason for that is because the characters need Basically, if, if, if there's some sort of event that happens 10 chapters from now, or let's say 20 chapters from now, um, I start thinking, okay, how do I push my characters or almost force my characters to get to a point where that's going to happen in the story? Like, how do I make sure this event happens at the expense of the character's free will, you could say? And so I want to avoid doing that the same time i do kind of have like the, similar to how alice and finch need to you know reunite um for the soul and prince i do have a certain point to think basically things get really bad in the city and uh sort of a battle breaks out and so the novel will you know slowly escalate but it can escalate all sorts of different ways um and i've sort of you know, I've planted all sorts of people who have um, antagonists who have um, motives that go against the main character. And maybe I need to flesh those characters out because I don't even know the names of of the some of the antagonists. Like, they kind of sort of appeared in my head to fill a role. Um, and, you know, they have some personality, but because I haven't been sort of brewing it for long enough in my head, um, it's not quite developed. And maybe writing some of that stuff out um, can help. So uh, I'm going to try and close this video now because I think I've, I've uh, had my little bit of rambling. Um, I've made a few interesting points. I guess I'll have to link Ellen Brock's video in my description as well. Um, kind of a nostalgic channel because it was thanks to her that, um, like, she was one of the first channels I checked out to, um, to do writing. Like, when I first decided, okay, I'm going to start writing, and I started my blog, her channel her videos were some of the first from those early days, and so they uh, they helped a lot. And um, yeah, so to conclude, I don't think I'm either of these arrow categories: the uh, intuitive pantser or the methodolog methodological plotter. I think I'm more of a um, intuitive something, or sorry, a methodological pantser, because I do like to pants, flying by the seat of my pants to sort of push out that um, information, that uh, sort of run the world and the characters in my head as I write and watch what they do naturally. Um, to a certain extent. I feel like that's pantsing, but maybe that's intuitive and I'm an intuitive plotter and I need that plotting. So I'm really not sure, but I think just my gut is telling me that um, methodological plotter, or sorry, methodological pantser is where I am rather than intuitive plotter. But maybe if I figure it out, I'll tell you. But if I have a methodology, it's it's one that I've sort of developed internally. And I think she said that's a thing that's one of the options in her video. So methodological pantser. Even though under the uh <laughs> under the uh MBTI system, I'm an INTJ, which would put me into intuition domin dominant, but 
I think intuitive here means something else. Or maybe not. Could be intuitive blotter. Getting confused. But basically, you see I have this core question, which of these two am I? Um, and therefore, which, which advice video should I watch, right? Because she's put out a video on both. Um, and I probably have to watch both and kind of be confused until I... Maybe I'll have to come with these, these memories of writing Alison Finch, writing Rays, and writing The Sullivan Prince. Anyway, thanks for thinking through this with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it isn't one of the topics that I talked about before. <sighs> to be honest, I don't even remember those topics. Um, I kind of had a, a period where I made a lot of plans and lo had a lot of ideas and then, you know, were they helpful? I don't know, but we'll see. Um, I am working on, um, maybe I'll say omelets. I'm working on the room as we have a different layout right now. I, I think I, I'm hoping, oops, I'm hoping it'll be good for, um, my online course stuff, which I'm still hoping to work on, even though I stopped for like three months but the webcam will be mounted like here so you'll see the bed um or maybe here point is that bookcase will have books on it and so i can you know <laughs> i really don't like the fact that this uh, shuts off with when you touch the shutter button or not the shutter button but the volume button Anyway, because that means I'm going to have to compile this video. Or compile is the wrong word. Render. Anyway. I think that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you next time. And I hope to uh, do some writing or I guess maybe some plotting to get unstuck. <laughs> See ya.